greetings and uh, best wishes. At the outset, I would like to thank the organizers for giving me this opportunity. I will be presenting our work on a short video on N block sacrectomy for a, a giant sacral cardama. The patient uh, whom I am going to show is a 51 year old male patient with low back pain and presented with a vague uh, presacral pain and radiation to both lower limbs. And the pain is in a non dermatomal pattern. And the patient presents with some amount of hypoesthesia in the lower limbs. And there is an occasional history of constipation. There were no bladder disturbances. Neurologically, patient is otherwise normal. These are the radiographs of the patients. You can uh, appreciate the AP and data reviews. And if you have a closer look in the AP view, you can appreciate there is a huge uh, light lesion at the distal end of the sacrum involving from S1, S2 segments to, and there is a ballooning of the cortex and some breach in the cortex as well. MRI of the same patient in the sagittal sections, if you can see there is a huge uh, hyperintense lesion arising from the S1 and completely uh, encroaching onto the uh, distal sacral segments. And also there is a breach in the cortex. You can see the posterior elements have breached and there is a infiltration into the soft tissue anteriorly and the posteriorly as well. And it looks like it's uh, pushing the say, rectum anteriorly. And this is how the, uh, the MRI picture of the patient is. This T1 uh, weighted image shows that to extent and the size of the tumor. A remnant of sacrum is paired, but the entire uh, distal sacral segments are involved, and there is a relatively uh, sparing of the uh, distal coxial segments as well. And there is an encroachment into the canal and posterior soft tissue. And these are the CT scan images of the same patient, showing the destruction of the cortex anteriorly and posteriorly in the sacrum. And this shows the axial sections of how extensive the lesion is involved in the sacrum. So this is the picture of the patients. It's a CT scan with the different uh, uh, levels of involvement and 3D reconstruction of the same patient. Coming to the management of the cardoma, the local recurrence is the most important predictor of the long-term uh, morbidity or mortality of these patients. The local recurrence is clearly related to the extent of the initial resection. How much uh, extensively you can re resect that much will be the uh, chances of uh, full clearance of the disease. But wide end block resection is necessary and then uh, it gives it also an opportunity to for cure. So radical resection with the intact tumor capsule with no touch technique in the sense that we should try to avoid as much as possible to open the capsule. If you can prevent, if you can remove the tumor and mass, uh, like with the end block uh, resection, there is a high chance of uh, opportunity to cure the disease as well. So coming to the case which we are discussing, the issue with this uh, case is its involvement of the S1 sacral segments. If the involvement is below S3, we can do a distal sacral amputation where the lower sacral parts can be easily uh, dissected and then removed with the retainment of the S1 uh, segment. But if it involves S1, we may we have to do a, a total sacral. The complete sacrum has to be removed. But the issue with the complete sacral removal is, is the issue with the bowel and bladder. To preserve the bowel function or bladder function, we need to have at least one S2 segment uh, on one side. If you can spare one uh, uh, S2 sacral narrow root, that can actually give a, a competent bladder or bowel. Once you have excised S1, it requires and mandates uh, uh, spinal pelvic reconstruction in these patients. Coming to the present patient, there are different options available. We can do anteriorly uh, the tumor resection or posteriorly. Most of the times it requires uh, anterior and posterior uh, resections. Piecemeal is out of the question. If you do a piecemeal excision, maybe the survival of the patient is very less. You can do a piecemeal excision to just to relieve the uh, neurological uh, compression. But uh, the permanent cure will be available with the end block excision. The end block excision, the issue of the end block excision is the thecal sac. If you want to remove the end block the sacrum, you need to ligate the thecal sac and cut the thecal sac and take out the tumor. Then comes the issues with the stability of the spine. So we approached these patients. Uh, we decided to do a, a 
combined anterior and posterior procedure. Uh, initially, you have obtained a biopsy of the lesion. So when you are planning for a biopsy, you should make sure that, that the biopsy track will be included in the final dissection uh, of the tumor with the skin as well. So we planned the surgery in two stages. In stage one, so uh, we planned the anterior procedure where we took the help of uh, a oncosurgeon who separates us from the anteriorly the tumor from the rectum. And the stage one involves, and stage two is actually the resection of the sacrum from the posterior, uh, which is our uh, spinal procedure. And then once you have taken out the tumor and the sacrum, uh, along with the tumor, you need to reconstruct the spine uh, using a spinopelvic uh, fixation. So anterior procedure uh, involves uh, mainly the exposure of the tumor by transperitoneal exposure. And the main important step is the mobilization of the rectum. The rectum has to be completely mobilized away from the tumor. This is an issue with uh, posterior single stage uh, uh, tumor resections. When you are trying to remove the tumor entirely from the posterior surface, so we don't know how adherent is the rectum to the tumor. And also, uh, when you are trying to separate the tumor from the posterior surface, you can have perforation of the rectum, and thus can be a little complication, which requires again from the uh, repair from the anterior. And most importantly, the anterior procedure gives uh, an advantage of ligating the internal iliac vessels. Once you have ligated the internal iliac vessels, the blood, the tumor immediately becomes bloodless, uh, both artery and vein. So the removal will be relatively safer and the bleeding will be uh, significantly less in these patients. And what, to remove the sacrum and block, we need to do a L5S1 discectomy anteriorly and partial excision of the bilateral sacroiliac joints so that the posterior excision will become a uh, little easier. So that is the discectomy, how we perform in these patients and uh, these are the li ligated vessels. Uh, you can see uh, internal iliac arteries and veins on the left side being ligated. Similar steps are being followed on the right side as well. Once you uh, ligate the tumor and expose the disc, uh, then becomes uh, the anterior procedure. Uh, the posterior becomes very easy. Let's go into the video details of the patient. Uh, this is the from the first stage anterior procedure wherein we have entered into the uh, abdominal cavity by transperitoneal exposure. The bowels were mobilized, mesenterian bowels were mobilized and pushed and we can identify the tumor, which is like a, a reddish bony uh, structure, which is arising from the sacrum. And the main step, the first step is to mobilize the rectum away from the tumor uh, so that the posteriorly, when you are trying to take out the tumor en masse with the sacrum, uh, the chances of perforations will be uh, very less. And the adhesions and the mesenterial uh, attachments are completely released. And you can see the vessels running on the side, both the, you can see the pulsating vessels of the internal leg uh, arteries. And these internal leg arteries have to be ligated to make the surgery bloodless. This is how the rectum and the other vital structures are being separated from the tumor. This cricket bottle like structure is the tumor. Uh, from the tumor, we are not. Uh, we can observe the how precise the tumor is being removed without touching the capsule of the tumor. Uh, and these are the areas where you can see uh, the internal iliac uh, uh, vasculature. So the internal iliac vessels are first identified. And they're separated from the external iliac. And the artery and vein are uh, touched uh, close to each other. And this the forceps is actually holding the internal iliac artery and which is being uh, ligated. We don't need to cut the vessels, we just need to ligate them so that the, so the circulation to the tumor becomes very less and the posterior surgery becomes uh, little bloodless. And once that is done bilaterally, the anterior discectomy is being completed. As we do, do the a thorough discectomy, so that the posterior procedure becomes easier. The anterior capsule is removed and annular ligament uh, is cut, annulus is cut and uh, the disc is completely uh, removed when doing the end plates are separated and the discectomy is done and trying to mobilize the tumor along with the sacrum anteriorly and if you can separate a little bit of uh, sacroiliac joints also uh, on the side that will make the posterior procedure easier that's how it looks uh, uh, the end of the procedure because the end plate is being separated from the L5 inferiorly, and that is the S1 superior uh, 
template, uh, which is being separated. And then the disk in between the two end plates is completely uh, removed. So at the end of the anterior procedure, you can appreciate uh, what is done. So we are uh, trying to uh, go layer by layer to show you exactly what is being done uh, in the anterior procedure. After doing a transperitoneal exposure, the bowels and the mesentery are separated. Once they are separated, you enter into the abdominal cavity where you go and directly reach the sac sacrum and where you can identify the extensive tumor of the sacrum here. That is the sacral tumor. I appreciate the sacral tumor and that's where the discectomy is the uh, discectomy was done to separate the sacrum so that we are going to do uh, the posterior uh, separation becomes easier and the sacrum can be completely uh, removed without much embarrassment like when you can appreciate the ligated uh, blood vessels as well on the sides that is the tumor extent with intact capsule these are the vessels which were uh, ligated appreciate the vein and artery, both internal iliac artery and internal iliac vein, which were uh, ligated uh, to make the tumor bloodless. Yeah, that is the artery and vein on one side, uh, which are being uh, ligated. Uh. So if you are trying to do that uh, for the lesions below uh, S2, you don't need to ligate these vessels. Uh, the procedure can be done uh, posteriorly or combined anterior and posteriorly if the rectum is added so that the tumor becomes uh, the removal of the tumor becomes easier. This is on the other side, uh, similarly, where there is uh, the ligation of the vessels seen uh, very clearly. So, this completes the uh, anterior procedure. Once you have done the anterior procedure, the tumor is separated anteriorly and it is ready to be removed from the posterior. The posterior uh, you can appreciate the uh, veins and uh, uh, vessels which are being ligated. So that is a discectomy procedure which is complicated. Once that part is over, uh, what uh, we have to do is uh, we turn the patient uh, posteriorly. This procedure was done in a, on a single day. So we turn the patient posterior and this is the marking of the incision. So to do a, a kind of pelvic fixation, the, the incision was made in the midline. And then this tumor along with the skin is uh, exposed. This is marked so that we are going to remove the entire uh, skin tag attached to the uh, biopsy tract. And these are the two iliac tests. So in the posterior, what we are going to do is once you uh, expose and put the pedicle screws bilaterally, the tumor along with the tract is being separated. And the most important step here is to ligate the uh, fecal sac so that the tumor becomes separated from the spine. That's where you need to cut and uh, ligate and remove the uh, tumor. In the posterior, and once that is done, the iliac screws are being applied so that uh, spinal pelvic fixation can be done uh, and complete tumor can be removed. The posterior procedure, uh, I'm just going to uh, show you how the posterior procedure is being performed. Once you have done the uh, anterior uh, completion removal, and this is the fecal sac which is exposed by laminectomy, and the anocoxial ligaments on the tacral the distal stem are separated along with the separation of the side of the sacrum, and the sacral leg joints are osteotomized, and this is the retroperitoneal pad which is being seen from the uh, posterior, and this is circumferentially the uh, the tumor is separated. You can see them some uh, infiltration of the tumor, which is uh, which has breached the sacral cortex and uh, came out of the sacral. That is the iliac uh, bone. Uh, we are going to fix the iliac, iliac bone with the uh, iliac screws. So iliac screws, because we have completely removed the sacrum, uh, we have to. Uh, uh, do a kind of a posterior superior spine osteotomy so that the screws won't be proud and pressing on the skin because the most com common complication of this uh, n block sacral excision is the wound healing issues and also exposure of the implant. 
So we make sure to the uh, implants are not so prominent. We have to osteotomize the, the prominent portion of the postoperatively spine. And under vision, we can simply put the VX screws here. And because that uh, in, inner cortex and outer cortex of the ilium are uh, completely visible, and you can probe and put the screw of uh, longest length uh, possible in these patients. And once that is done, the screw is inserted. The VX screw is being inserted here. Fast forward to save the time. So, this is the main important step. Once that is done, uh, we need to ligate the thecal sac. This patient has got an extra aberrant uh, one nerve root, so that that nerve root is being preserved, and we are trying to separate and cut the thecal sac from the uh, just below that uh, root fragment to avoid the CSF leakage. We have to ligate the proximal and also the distal stumps uh, and the in between portion of the uh, root uh, is being uh, cut. The thecal sac is being cut here. As a spine surgeon, this is the one of the dirtiest, uh, the dangerous, uh, deliberate cutting of the nerve roots uh, uh, we encounter in our lifetime. Uh, so this is the most uh, unwarranted procedure uh, in a spine surgeon's lifetime. So we, we never try to cut the neural sac, neural sacs deliberately to, unless for this kind of uh, unblock uh, tumor exercise. So both ends of the thecal sac are being cut. Once uh, we say this is to make sure that there is no uh, CSF leak which comes out from the, the remnant of the roots which are there at the other side. So this takes this mask contains all the nerve roots uh, below the total set, meaning that uh, S3, S4, S5 sectal segments, and they all are going to come out in a single mass uh, when you cut the thickal sac and remove the tumor. So that's how the, the cut thickal sac is being. Cut, separating the tumor from the spine. So now that the anteriorly the tumor is separated with the discectomy, and the posteriorly we are uh, separating it from the nerve, uh, and then distally it is separated from the uh, in the anocoxygal lamina, and that's how the tumor is separated. And we can see the remnant of some tumor which is uh, infiltrated into the uh, by breaching the cortex. Period. So once that is done, you can see the uh, tumor is being uh, separated uh, from the lesion. We need to be very careful while removing the tumor now, uh, because any unnoticed adhesions which are there uh, anteriorly, if you try to pull them, they can cause the proliferation of the uh, visceral structures in the anterior abdominal cavity. So carefully, the tumor is being separated uh, from all the directions. Uh, it's uh, removed. If you can see that some breach in the cortex and infiltrate of the tumor growth which is there on that side. So there are some uh, ligamentous structures which are uh, restricting the tumor to be removed. Uh, these are some ventricular attachments on the anterior surface of the tumor, which is being now separated from the tumor surface. And also, the anocoxyl rafe is being uh, separated from the tumor. Once that is done, then you can have the tumor uh, separated from the body. So you can see the tumor along with the sacrum, say so small size cricket ball size uh, tumor with intact uh, capsule, except for this area where it is infiltrated, uh, uh, came out of the sacral tumor. So once that is done, uh, then we need to stabilize the spine uh, with a uh, fixation. Uh, the spinopelvic fixation is being performed by applying the parts. That is the retroperitoneal pad, a pad which is seen from the front. Now the closure is the main issue in these patients. We need to mobilize as much of the gluteus magnae possible on the uh, sides to cover the tumor. And sometimes we may also need to have uh, rectus abdominis muscle flat to cover the tumor. Uh, otherwise, uh, we will end up with a uh, lot of wound healing issues because there is nothing operating from both the skins and the front and back without any bony structure in between. That's the tumor with the sacrum, which is uh, uh, removed uh, completely. Yeah. 
So that completes the uh, total end block uh, cycle dissection of uh, patients uh, uh, in this patient. So that's how it looks at the end of the day. Once we remove the tumor, with the tumor surface, then we have taken X ray test to make sure that how much of the extent of the spine is being removed. And this is the post operative picture with the uh, cycle with uh, dissections. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much for this time.